Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. That comes from the famous, fantastic play, Fiddler on the Roof, which I hope you've all seen. So let's talk a little bit about how Match.com or OkCupid or eHarmony, whatever, would try and match people up based on compatibility. So we've made up some people's names here, and we'd ask them some questions. What their age is? Are they religious or not? One means they're religious. Do they like Kanye West or not? Uh, one means they like him, zero means they don't. Like Taylor Swift or not, a one means they like Taylor, zero means they don't. Same with Britney Spears. Would they rather live in the country or the city? A one means the city, zero the country. Okay, are they, uh, are they a Republican or Democrat? A one means a Democrat, zero a Republican. Are they a morning person or not? A one would mean a morning person. And a zero means they're not a morning person. So what you'd want to do is match up people who are most similar. So in other words, I would assume on age, they want people the same age. We'll make that assumption. But like for Jessica, if somebody totally matched what's in row five, that would be somebody who's compatible with Jessica. Well, you've got to approach this from several viewpoints. First of all, how much weight do you give to each of these variables? Well, I said 20% of the weight would go to age, 20% to religion, etc. And you could vary this, of course. And I think the people who do this online stuff, they'll tweak the weights to make the matches have the most success. And then basically you would look for each person to see who is basically the most similar to each of them. So we might want to get the three top matches to each person. That's what we're going to try and do. So in terms of distance and past, we've looked at square distances, but let's just look at absolute value. So in other words, if somebody is 40 and Jessica's 38, the difference is two years. Okay, rather than square the distances, because then you've got to take a square root, it gets a bit messy. So we'll try and look at weighted similarities. In other words, we would take the one-year difference between Jessica and Wayne times 0.2. Religion, there's zero difference times 0.2. Taylor and, uh, and Taylor Swift, I liked her. Jessica did not. There's a difference of one times 0.05, etc. So we would try and find out the weighted difference, but there's a problem with this. The age variable would dominate. Why? Because it's much more spread out. All these other variables are either one or zero, but you could have a 25-year-old here and a 44-year-old here, and basically that would be a difference of 19, and even if they were incompatible on every other variable, that wouldn't sort of cancel out the age difference. So what we do is standardize things. We look at how many standard deviations above or below average each data point is, in other words, an age. 44 is old, relatively speaking. How old is that relative to average? And then basically, when we standardize things, by standardization means it's what we call a z-score, which you may have heard. You take the value of something minus the mean, and you divide it by the standard deviation. And that will average out to zero and have a uh, standard deviation of one. OK, so we need to find the mean of each of these to do the standardization. So what's the average age? It's 35, and then we have the average on all these things. So the people, slightly more than half of them are religious. Three quarters of them, uh, like Britney Spears, well, that surprises me, although she's been doing well lately. I hope her life continues to stay together. Now the standard deviation, right here. Notice the age has a much higher standard deviation, a standard deviation of seven, while the other variables, of course, have standard deviations less than one. Now, how do we standardize? Well, we take the value of the person's age minus the mean. Now, we're going to copy that down and across, so we need the dollar sign, the 17. And then we would divide, because we want the e to change to f, but not the 17 to change. Then divide by the standard deviation, dollar sign, the 18. So Jessica is about three years above average. That's about half the standard deviation, 0.4. Now, if I would copy that, we will now work when we try and find the distance between people with this standardized stuff. Okay, now what is the average in each category here of the standardized values? It should be zero, and it is. What's the standard deviation of the standardized values? It should be 1, because that means every one of these standardized variables has the same spread. Okay, we're in good shape. Okay, 
So now what we want to do is if you give me two people, let's suppose I pick uh, Jed and I pick Amy, and basically we'd look up their ages, their religious preferences, etc., find the absolute difference and find the weighted absolute difference, and then we could make a two-way data table that would show us how basically everybody has a weighted different score with everybody else, then use conditional formatting to highlight for each person their three best matches. Okay, so we're getting there. So how would I create two people? Well, I could use data validation, which would work. So data, data validation, I want a list. And it's going to come right from here. These are the people's names. So I could say Laura, and I could say Bob. Okay, now how would I look up their age, etc., their religion? I could do a VLOOKUP ALL. So if I do Bob, I would find the age in the second column, and I'd find the religion in the third column, okay, if I use this range right here. Okay, I would find for, uh, the Kanya score in the uh, fourth column. There. So I could do a VLOOKUP. See, we're using so much stuff that we've learned based on Bob there. I need to dollar sign the D. Okay, then I'd use this range. That's got to be dollar sign. Now, which column would I find the H? It's the second column, and I need to dollar sign the F. So the uh, 36 there, so I always get the right column. And I need the word false, so let's check if I looked up Bob there. What's Bob at 1.26? And if I copy this across, do I get all Bob, that whole row for Bob? 1.26.80, that's good. Now, if I copy this down, do I get it for Laura? Laura minus 1.33, minus 1.13, great. So now I would find the absolute difference between these. I could square them, but then it just doesn't have units that make much sense when you square things. So I'll take the absolute value, which means I ignore the minus sign. Oops, absolute value of F38 minus F39. And then I need to weight that by the weights, which I've copied here. I just sum a product. I take 0.2 times this. See, we're using so much stuff that we've learned that we haven't even used the data table or conditional formatting yet. So here's the weights. And here's the absolute differences. So we get a weighted difference of 1.91 between Bob and Laura. Now what we want to do is compute this formula for every combination of two people. Okay, so that's job for a two-way data table. Put the first person okay, we could say that person, the column input cell could be here. And then when I have the name, so I've created, I just copied the names, and now I can transpose them to put them going across. So I do Control C, right click, transpose. Okay. And then for the row input cell, I can make the row input cell feed into a D38. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but we'll make row input D38, column input D39. And then the output cell is going to be that formula, which is the distance between them, absolute distance. And we should check that when we've got Bob and Laura We do come out with that 1.91. Okay, so if I do two-way data table, control shift right arrow, control shift down arrow, I go data what if analysis, data table. Now the row input cell, what did I say? I said put that here. And I said the column input cell, put that here. Okay, and we're in good shape because Bob and Laura come out to 1.94. Let me clear that format. 
Okay, so now notice on the diagonal there's zero. So how would I highlight the three top matches to, let's say, Jessica, and then make a copy down and across? Well, the problem is that zero would not be an exact match, okay, because that's the person, uh, sorry, that would not be a compatible match because that's the person themselves. So what you want to do is highlight anything that's one of the four smallest in each row, as long as it's greater than zero, because that would exclude the zero. So if I select this range, I can do home, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, and I'd use an and. So I'd say equals and. Okay, if the cell were in, no dollar signs, because it has to copy totally down. It's greater than zero, and the cell we're in is less than or equal to, okay, the fourth smallest. So I could say small in this row. Okay, now if I want to copy that down and across, what's got to be there? Okay, so it's got to be basically E through P. But the 45s need to change. Okay, so something like that. So we, we, so when I copy it down, it changes to E through P46. But if I copy it across, it's still E through P. And then if, anything that's less than or equal to the fourth smallest. If there is a tie, I mean, we might highlight more than three people. But that's okay. But that says basically, okay, you would highlight any number in this selected range. If it's greater than zero and it's smaller than the four, less than or equal to the fourth smallest number in that row, okay? And that's going to exclude the zero, so you'll get the three smallest numbers in each row, which are your three best matches. So let's see if this works. Uh, we need a format. So yellow shows up pretty well. Uh, so we're missing a parenthesis there. Oh, right here. So because the small has a parenthesis. All right. So let's see. Jessica would be matched with Wayne, Amy, and Vivian. Okay. Wayne would be matched with Jessica, Amy, and Vivian. Julie would be matched with Jessica, Bob, and Talesh. And that looks like it works perfectly. Okay, so I think we have used so much stuff in this example. We use data tables, we use data validation, we use sum of product, we use VLOOKUPs, we use mean and standard deviation, we use the concept of standard deviation. Just so much stuff was used in this example. So I think this is, it's interesting and fun, but it's also very useful and sort of gives you an idea how companies like Amazon would give you recommendations for books or records as well as uh, giving recommendations for who you should go out with. And this is often called collaborative filtering. Collaborative because it involves information from different people and filtering because it filters through either the books or the people that are online for you. Okay, so thanks for watching, and, and there's a free course, a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, and all of these videos are coming from one of three books. So first, this one, which you can see here at the top of the screen, um, Microsoft's book, which has 355 reviews, uh, and then it's, let's see, 4.6 stars. Um, it's coming from this book as well, his marketing analytics book, which is down here, and you can sort of see 4.5, or his newest book, his analytics stories book, which is here. And with that one, you can see it's four point something, or maybe even five. I don't think it's five. Yeah, 4.8. And so, yeah, anyways, in the description, there's a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, or you can go to excelwithwayne.com slash free, and it'll be there. But again, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just uh, please let us know. Thanks.